Okay, so in this final video, I'm just going to go through a few simple properties of the determinant. So, as we saw, we defined the determinant of a matrix A, B, C, D is equal to A, D minus B, C. So it's like a cross this times this and minus this times this. Okay, so just a couple of things which are important about the determinant. Firstly, the determinant of an inverse matrix is equal to 1 over the determinant of that matrix itself. You can check this is true. And check it, secondly, the determinant of a product of matrices A times B is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B. Okay, and in fact, it's enough just to prove this one because using this one you can prove that if I consider debt of a times a minus 1 this is equal to debt of a times debt a minus 1 but we know that this is equal to the determinant of the identity matrix here which is equal to 1 okay and the result here follows from this equation so those are some properties of the determinant you can prove I, I won't prove them, but they're easy to check. I want to finish to give you a geometrical interpretation of the determinant. Okay, so to do this I want to consider just again two dimensions and we've got a basis here i and j. Okay. And what happens to this basis if we apply the vector a? So i will go into a times i. So this is a, b, c, d times 1, 0. So this is a, c. Okay. So as we said before, the first column tells you what the first basis vector turns into, which is going to be somewhere up here. Okay. So this is a of i here then this length is equal to a and this height is equal to c. Okay, and similarly the second basis vector j will go into a j. It's a b c d 0 1 which is b d. Okay, so this second basis vector j will go into another vector up here something like this so this vector is a times j, okay. and again it forms a triangle here. The height is d, and the width here is b. Okay, so what I want to work out is how does the area change under this transformation. So if I take the square here formed by i and j that clearly has area equal to 1 if let me draw it again down here with, without the drawings without the a b c d marked on if here I consider the same thing so I have my true transform vectors like this and I consider the square they make well this is no longer a square because the transformation distorts it but you can see that you'll end up with a shape like this okay which is called a parallelogram Not sure I've spelled that right. Anyway, parallel. So we'd like to work out what's the area of this shape here. Okay, so we can work this out in the following way. Suppose I've got the shape like this. The area of this shape is equal to this length here, L times the perpendicular height here, h. Okay. So the area is equal to L times h. Okay. And if I say this length here is something, la, 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 let's call this k, okay. then you can see from this triangle here that if this angle is theta, then h is equal to 
k sine theta. So this is equal to L times k times sine of theta. But in terms of these vectors here, this is the vector AC, this one. And this is the vector here, BD. So this is equal to, L is the length of this vector, so length of the vector AC. K is the length of this vector, that's the length of the vector BD. And times sine of the angle between them. And this should remind you of the vector product formula, right? Length of vector, length of vector, sine theta. Except it's only in two dimensions. But we can make it into three dimensions just by adding a third component, which is zero. So this is equal to the vector product of AC0 and BD0. Okay? And then you can compute this vector product. This is the x component is 0, the y component is 0, and the z component is AD minus BC, which is AD minus BC, which is the determinant of A, absolute value. Okay, so this gives you a geometrical de interpretation of determinant A. Determinant of A tells you the scale factor by which the area is increased. Originally the area was 1, this little square, and after the transformation, the area is now given by the determinant of A. So, let me write that in summary. So, in summary, determinant of A is the factor by which A increases area. Okay, at least the absolute value of the determinant of A is that. So that's a very important conclusion, and we'll use this conclusion when we talk about generalizing the determinant to higher dimensions. Okay, the fact that the determinant tells you the scale factor of the transformation. Now, one thing I haven't explained, so I just want to say it quickly. The scale factor in area is the absolute value of the determinant. But the determinant can be negative, right? Here, for example, if I take the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0, then the determinant of this matrix is minus 1. So what does it mean, the minus sign? Okay, and I can quickly give you the answer. It's to do with the orientation of the area. What that means is if I start with the square here, I can give it an orientation by telling you the way to go around it. So let's say we go around it counterclockwise. So that means I would go around it this way, and this way, and then this way, and then this way. Okay. So I'm going around the square in this direction. Now after the transformation, if I consider the parallelogram, what happens to that direction? I go this way, and I go this way, and I go this way, and I go this way. So after the transformation, I am still going around in the counterclockwise direction. And the rule is, if this is true, so if you start going in this direction and you finish in the same direction, then the determinant is positive. But if you start going in this direction counterclockwise, but the transformation turns you into a clockwise direction, then the determinant is negative. Okay, we can quickly show it with this matrix here. All this matrix does is swap i and j, right? This is i, but it becomes the second basis vector. This is j, but it becomes the first basis vector. So if I just do it down here where we've got a bit of space left, if a is 0, 1, 1, 0, then what does that do? You start off with the two basis vectors here, i and j, and it maps into the same vectors, except their order is swapped round. So this one is now a of j, this one is A of I here. So if I make a square by doing I first, then J, then minus I, then minus J, you see that's taking me around in the counterclockwise direction. But here I do I first, and then J, then minus I, 
then minus j, you can see that this is taking me around in the clockwise direction. So the direction around the square has been reversed. Here it was this way, now we're going that way. Okay. So if a, deter if a transformation reverses the direction around the square, then it has a negative determinant. And that completely defines the, what the determinant is. So the, the length, the size of the determinant, tells you the scale factor of the area. And plus or minus tells you whether the direction is reversed or not. And as I said, we'll see that these ideas about determinant in this in geometrical interpretation generalize to higher dimensions, which is what we're going to do next week.